I recently started playing Graveyard Keeper and instantly after booting up the game, I was bombarded with an esoteric, fantastical story. I'm not just a graveyard keeper who makes a graveyard better. No, 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 that's way too simple. I've recently died or something and this magical ghost skeleton is telling me that the only way for me to return to my regular life is by succeeding at being a graveyard keeper. But what about my wife who apparently exists? Well, if I ever want to see her again, I better be a good fucking graveyard keeper. And now this reanimated skull called Jerry is giving me exposition. This bishop is shocked at my presence but has adorned me as the town's religious leader. And there's a town and village and all sorts of crazy dynamics and stories I'm yet to discover. And I would have been surprised but I'm all too familiar with games like this having way more story than they need. Often I've found these life RPG town building simulator type games contain really good writing. And the question is why? These games don't need to have good characterization or world building or narratives for me to love them. I mean, I don't play these games for the story, I play them because I like the art style and music. I play them for the constant sense of progression and because I'm looking for games with mechanics which are satisfying and fulfilling. So why do these games have good writing? Well, to answer that, I think we need to answer a different question. What type of writing do these games have and why is it really different from just a regular RPG? And to talk about this, we're going to look at three games, Graveyard Keeper, Stardew Valley and Littlewood. So the first thing to note is that these games don't really have stories or at least not main plot lines which push the game forward which you would expect from a regular RPG. I mean, they do and Graveyard Keeper has the most in-depth central narrative of any of these games, but either way, not really. What they more have are premises, which are basically the setup for the game, the main conceit around which the entire game will function within. You're a graveyard keeper, you're a farmer, you're an amnesiac savior of the realm who for some reason is building a town. Standard stuff really. And while these games have great writing, a large part of it is just in-world rationale for why the chosen game mechanics would make sense with the rest being world building. And these are the three real pillars of writing for RPG simulators. Premise, rationalization, and world building. So premises. These are basically the one or two sentence synopsis which you give to describe the game. Your grandfather leaves you his farm and after being broken by a terrible company and the horrors of capitalism, you yearn for a simpler life and are starting anew, farming, fishing, and cave exploring. But obviously this premise isn't what the game is, and I'm sure for many that tick the skip intro button, they are completely unaware this is even the overarching story of Stardew Valley, a story which doesn't really matter at all. And the way the game sells this premise is way more than just the writing. It's the art style, the world, the music. I mean, often the writing is fairly tertiary. When the game does present its premise, it's often presented to the player at the beginning of the game in like a two minute cutscene, then barely ever referenced again. It might act a bit like a vague through line, a sort of ultimate end goal, but for the most part, these aren't really critically important to the game. RPG simulators are aware of this too. Littlewood treats its premise with a knowing sense of satire. You are some almighty savior of the land who has only just woken up from a three day slumber post their fight with the anonymously evil threat that overshadowed the land. But what? You can't remember doing any of this? Well, rest not that weary forgetful head because all you need to do now is build up a cute little community. And why not make your little town building protagonist an ultimate hero? The setup for these types of games is set dressing. Make it whatever you want. Have fun with it because RPG simulators are more about the mechanics and any narrative really exists to serve the gameplay. Which is the second reason these games have writing, to rationalize their mechanics. This is basically the in-world reasoning for why you're engaging in the game. In Littlewood, the reason that you need to collect the materials to make all the items in the game is because the various individuals that come to your town all have different interior design demands. And if you want to complete their homes, then you'll need to make all the different wallpapers, floor tiles, and furniture. All in all, just giving you a reason to do stuff in the game. And this sort of justification exists for progression. Oh, the reason the bus doesn't work is because you've failed to put this collection of items into the community center. But once you do that, we'll be golden and you'll unlock this new area of the map. Ooh, ah. Hey, I'm an NPC with a name and I won't give you the quest item that will let you get to the next part of the game because I have my own thing going on and thoughts and feelings and I need you to prove yourself to me by bringing me a bunch
bunch of fucking moths. And for games like this, where the progression through the game and your constant ascent is the real propulsion behind the game, this justification is really just a nice cherry on top, but isn't fully necessary. Like we all understand that certain things just exist in games because they're game mechanics, and the game doesn't need to explain to us why they make sense. Let's take a super simple concept like dying. We all know you can die in games, and unless the game is super hardcore, then we all expect to Jesus out of the fucking grave and be ready to go round too. And the game doesn't need to explain how your character has managed to defy the laws of nature, and yet sometimes they do. In Stardew Valley, you are found in the cave and then brought to the doctor who patches you up, which is fairly basic. In Graveyard Keeper though, we start to see the inclusion of world building and even the premise in this rationalization. Because the first time you are likely to die in Graveyard Keeper is during this scripted cutscene, and the game has this NPC comment on how crazy it is that you're still alive. Then to add on to it, this character Snake recognizes how unique and incredible this ability is and then uses it for their own need. Your character's ability to just use game mechanics, in this case respawn, is acknowledged as amazing and advantageous, so the in-world characters want to use it, and I love this. But most writing in games don't integrate these elements quite as nicely as Graveyard Keeper does. What world building in these games is usually about is just that. World build, creating characters and short narratives which might get the player to be more emotionally invested in the people they're interacting with or the task they're doing. Or it can provide information about the world, the society, the place we're existing in and make us feel more apart and connected to it because we have more information. And this information is usually totally superfluous and unnecessary to know and doesn't affect the players to engage with the actual game mechanics. But it's not meant to do that. World building writing is just meant for you to care more about the internal aspects of the game. And for some people, this is really important for them to actually like the game. So there's a ton of different ways to do world building, but let's talk about two, building the world and building characters. Lots of these games have tons and tons of history that the creators usually lovingly have poured their hearts and souls into noodling up. These games will often have throwaway lines or small interactions that allude to or describe much bigger aspects of the world. We can see this in Stardew Valley with Kent. Kent is a character that returns in year two because he's been at war. Apparently we are a part of the Ferngill Republic and are currently at war with the brutal and cruel Gotoro Empire. And hearing this piece of information might make you really excited, might make you want to know more, and might affirm your love for Stardew Valley. Or you might shrug and not care at all, and that's the point. When it comes to characters, lots of writing in these games works to just have fun and interesting characters. Littlewood has evolving narratives behind its characters which you unlock if you talk to them more. I mean, so does Stardew Valley and Graveyard Keeper, and these are really where a lot of the best story arcs are held in the game. It's not the main plot, it's the discovery of who these characters are, what's their deal, what have they been through, and what kind of friendship or boinkship will your character create with them. For some people, these are the main point of playing the game, to befriend these people, to have relationships with these characters, and to feel a part of the world, and for others, it's merely a perfunctory mechanic which they might elect to not even participate in. And this world building is by far the most common element of any writing, and it's good because it makes you invested in the world. It's usually written really well, so it makes you care for the characters and curious to learn about them and the world, even enough to make you want to do quests for them or spend time and effort increasing their relationship just so you can unlock more of their story. World building, like the other elements, naturally filter to its audience. Because if you don't care about any of the premise, the rationalization, or the world building and are just playing for the mechanics, then you can skip the dialogue and not interact with the relationship mechanics. It's okay. But there will also be a portion of people whose experience with the game is predicated on these elements, and if they're bereft, then they won't really enjoy the game. So the answer to the question, why do these games have such good writing? Well, because this means the games reach a wider audience who need good writing, while also getting most of the player base to feel a greater connection to the game. The three games I've talked about are incredible, and setting up the premise, rationalizing the mechanics, and fully building out the world and characters are so important. And most people who have played these games would probably agree they wouldn't be anywhere near as good without them.
And that's the video. If you enjoyed it and learned something, drop it a like, subscribe to the channel, and why not check out some of my other content where I similarly dissect the very fabric of gaming. And as always, I will see you in the next one. Bye.